On land, you can fake it. You get out there in the ocean, everything's bigger than you. The ocean's bigger than you, the canoe's bigger than you, the seas are bigger than you, the battle's bigger than you. So whoever you really are, the true person of who you are surfaces. And that's a good thing. People have been voyaging by sea for centuries, but Hokulea's purpose is to malama honua, which means to care for our island earth. But not everything went smoothly along the way. The Hawaiian crew and the Hali crew seen the journey from different viewpoints, and at times, the weather was another hardship. But through all the conflicts, they were able to spread their message and continue on with their journey. The seven main Hawaiian islands were settled in 850 AD by the Polynesians. They traveled to the islands by canoe and brought items suitable for living with them. Benjamin Finney, a professor of anthropology at UH, was inspired by Hawaii's ancient Polynesian ancestors to reassemble a long distance voyaging canoe for wayfinding. Money wise, money wise is always a problem. <laughs> I mean, this is a costly endeavor to go around the world. Over $60,000 were needed to reach this big ambition, but Finney couldn't do it on his own. So he founded the Polynesian Voyaging Society along with his colleague Herb Kawai Nui Kane. Hawaii was the last state to become a part of the USA and ever since then, they have lost a lot of old practices and traditions and have become more like every other state. It has been 600 years since the last canoe was built before the Hokulea and the state of Hawaii was becoming more of an Americanized society. But Finney's main motives were bringing attention to the environmental problems in the world. Uh, in Hawaii, we deal with uh, our environmental issues in one way, so what we wanted to do is to go around the world and see what other people are doing, what other na nations are doing in their, in their areas where they live, and share, ask them to share with us uh, how they are dealing with these problems, and then we share ours. So it's a matter of doing that, going around the world and bringing it one, bringing attention to the problems that are facing the environmental conditions that are facing our world, but also to share with them. Spreading aloha and rediscovering their past. Uh, spread the aloha. Our crew, uh, you know, back in the very beginning, the purpose for Hokulea was for Hawaiians to rediscover the past, who they were as a people. So our crew was predominantly Hawaiian. And then uh, in the 90s, 2000, early 2000s, we were trying to reconnect with our Polynesian cousins. So we still had a Hawaiian crew, but we had Polynesian crew. This worldwide voyage, we had all ethnicities on board. All ages, male, female. Uh, it, was, it was a reflection of who we are as a Hawaiian state, the people of Hawaii. Yeah? So everybody was reflected, and so it, it was. It was one of the, the, the conditions or the reasons for going was to spread that law that we, we pretty much can live together well here. And to train the next generations to make sure they didn't come close to losing their ancient culture again. Because as I said, uh, I've been sailing Hokulea for 40 some odd years, and sooner or later I'm going to have to stop. <laughs> I'm going to age out. The third and a really important thing was to say was to train the next generation of boys. So we did, uh, in all aspects, captain, navigator, cook, rescue, fishermen, all of, all of, all of those aspects. On May 1st, 1976, Ben Finney and his crew set sail for the first time from Honolulu Bay on Maui to Papiti Harbor on Tahiti. In total, the crew consisted of 17 members, most of which had no prior knowledge on how to navigate a canoe without tools, but they wanted to prove everyone that they could navigate solely off of the environment around them, just like their ancestors. Luckily enough, they were able to invite Mao Pialug of Micronesia to be their master navigator. He used the stars, sun, moon, and ocean swells to navigate the double-hulled canoe, and when the sky was gloomy, he was able to use a mental picture to find his way to Tahiti. It was a costly endeavor to build a double-hulled canoe and to sail around the world, but they had sponsors and support from local businesses. They would often encounter storms and uneasy weather patterns, but they decided to persevere by using the best strategy possible at the time, whether it be going against or with the currents. 
Also, the Hawaiian and Haole crew members seen the voyage from different viewpoints. For the Haole crew members, the voyage was a scientific experiment, and for the Hawaiians, the voyage was a highly emotional journey of culture of reawakening. All conflicts aside, they were able to travel around the world in their canoe to spread their message and got support from others while also relearning old ways and strategies of living. They reached Papiti Harbor 35 days later on June 4, 1976 and stayed to celebrate for a while. The story of Hokulea wasn't over after she made it back to Hawaii on July 26, 1976. The double hulled canoe has been voyaging across the ocean for over 40 years now with breaks in between. In the meantime, several organizations and conservationists like the International Center on Nonviolent Conflict and the Polynesian Voyaging Society came together to discuss how they can make our environment on the islands one that's worth living in. Before sailing again, the team takes 18 months to recruit people to see who's dedicated and who works well with others. Original crew members mentor those who are looking to be a part of the crew, but a lot of the original crew members leave due to aging out. Some people thought the Hokulea shouldn't sail anymore because of the dangers and risks of getting lost at sea. But after all, the crew members represent the people of Hawaii and any future generations when they go to places that don't necessarily know about Hawaii. So we are the face that's out there because once we left Polynesia, Nobody knows who we are. You go to Bali, people, what is that? Who, who are they? What kind of boat is that? You, know, you go to Africa, they don't know who you are. Australia, they don't know what Hawaiian is. So, we are there, for many peoples out there, we are their first introduction to Hawaii and its people. So you better step up, you better behave, because there's no, no tolerance. You step out of line once, you're gone. Like, now gone and that happened didn't happen much a couple of times but everybody got the message you know because we're not out there to party and to look you know and then it's all about me kind of thing it's all about everybody else so. they might have been regular people to start with but their message was strong and they had hopes to bring back the energy that was once strong and powerful in their community so they did On the voyage, there were many different legs. Since the journey was so long, each leg had different crew members. You would get eight hours of sleep, then another shift. The Hokulea went to different places and shared Hawaii's culture with them. They taught people around the world about Hawaii. Hokulea had many sponsors that made the voyage possible. University of Hawaii let the organization use their facilities and Hawaiian Airlines was able to help the crew by flying them anywhere where they needed to be at no charge. The crew faced many environmental challenges during the voyage and weather played a big role in determining what to do. Heavy storms would come upon the Hokulea and its crew. The team had to learn how to maneuver the boat where it needed to go in order to make it through the storm. Pirates were also a huge roadblock. The team, however, was able to get through it. On the boat, there is a stick for when or if someone falls off. It also has solar panels used for broadcasting live radio while voyaging. Food and bathrooms are a limitation for any type of voyage. On the Hokulea, food is cooked in a box with a heater inside. Bathrooms aren't available, so they just do their business on the side of the boat. The crew doesn't get to sleep in the most ideal place. It is on the side of the boat with a padded cushion. After the Hokulea voyage, people around the world changed. They have more knowledge about Hawaii's culture and what types of environmental challenges Hawaii faces. Before the Hokulea traveled around the world and reached different places, some communities didn't know who or what Hawaii was. People around the world now view Hawaii as differently because of the Hokulea. They now know what the Aloha Spirit is. The crew members' attitudes changed as well. At the beginning of the voyage, they weren't the same as when they came off the boat. Throughout the voyage, the crew members had to learn how to work together and face the obstacles they had in front of them. But this is just a start. It's a journey to bridge the gap between modern and ancient life. This is the Hokulea.